Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Design That. Today I'm going to show you how I built my proofing press. So I'm going to break this up into four parts. First I'm going to talk a little bit about what a proofing press is. Then I will show you the build of how I made it. We'll then go over some test prints. And lastly, I will conclude and talk a little bit about maybe some upgrades that I'm going to make to this machine. Proofing presses were used in the early to mid 20th century. This is before the days when you had obviously digital inkjet printers and laser printers. Before that, most text and images were created from either metal or wood. So proofing presses were used to, to make a quick test print before you moved a chase full of metal or wood type into an actual production machine. They were also used to print posters because you could make the bed really as big as you want. Now I've made this proof and press to print slightly bigger than A3, but yeah, there's no reason why you couldn't make one that goes up to A1 or A0, really any size. There are a few companies that do still make proof and presses. Typically they are all made from metal. I've gone for a cheaper plywood base. The ones that you buy are very, very expensive. They can go up to you know two, three thousand euros for a proofing press. As you'll see from the build, it's actually quite a simple machine. And I was looking at all these pictures of proofing presses, looking at the price tags, and I was just kind of wondering why are they priced so high when to me it looks like a pretty simple machine. And after building one myself, they are very, very easy to build and they work really well. Now, as you'll see in the test print section, you'll be surprised of what you can actually do with a proofing press. Um, they're really not just for letterpress and type. I've been able to obviously print photopolymers, which are kind of like the modern day replacement of metal and wood letters. I've also been able to do obviously lino and relief prints. And also I've been able to do etchings, which this is not really suitable for etchings because you do need a lot of pressure. But I mean, this roller is solid stainless steel. It's 65 millimeter in diameter, and it can certainly cope with higher pressures that are needed for printing etchings. So I'm gonna show you the build video now, and I'm gonna talk you through how exactly I made it. So first of all, for the side panels, I made a jig that you see here. I'm just using some dowel pins and some Mighty Byte Pitbull clamps to clamp this in place. So with this jig, it meant that all of the holes that I machined uh, were gonna be in the exact same place, which was obviously really important because it's important that the roller is nice and level. There was a bit too much coolant here, but it got the job done. So next was to place the bearing into the side panel, which you can see I've got both panels made here with the bearings in place. Now it's time to fit the roller into the bearing and I filed down the shoulder of the roller just so it'd be a push fit into the bearing. For the base, I'm just using some Osmo oil to give it a protective coat. The side rails were machined out of stainless steel. Here I'm just drilling the holes and you can see how this is put together. So I glued on the stainless steel side rails and they're just held in place with some screws which would come up through and they would also be used to put in the end stops which you'll see are 3D printed. So now I just left it to dry and this is on the underside. So to stop the bearings from eventually wearing into the wood, I laid down just two steel tracks. And this is what the bearings are moving along on the underside of the press. I just 3D printed these end stops, so it just essentially stops the roller from obviously rolling off the press. So now it's time to put it together. You can see I've added these four little Teflon pads and they just help it to slide along and they also stop the lateral movement of the roller. Now it was just a case of adding the bearings. And 
And as you can see, the bearings, they move up and down this steel rail on the underside of the press. Lastly was obviously just the threaded rod. It's pretty simple, we just threaded it through and put on some nuts to hold it in place. I just added a wooden handle as well, just so I've got something to grip onto. And here I'm just putting on some wooden legs. They're just held in place with some glue and screws that go through into the plywood base. I just 3D printed some end caps. Now it's time to do some test printing. I've got some uh, lino print here that I made. I'm just using some paper and a towel. So there you go, it printed it really nicely. I, I have no issues with that. So now it was time to do one of my first test etchings. This was just a really small plate. And again, I'm just using some paper and a towel. And this works surprisingly well for small prints. it picks up a pretty good impression there. You can see it's, it's picked up the tones in the plate quite well. I wanted to try some photopolymer, so I made a quick uh, Christmas plate here. And I'm just using the etching blankets for this. And these are good because they allow you to get a really nice deep impression And there you go. So it's nice and crisp and it's created a nice deep impression, which is what I wanted on this paper. You can see it's gone through there on the other side. And here I'm doing a print, a lighter print. I didn't want any impression, so I just put a bit of paper over the top. And you can just about feel it kiss that plate as it rolls over it and it creates a really nice impression. Now, I wanted to do a bigger test etching because I wasn't having much success with just using paper and towels for this large plate. And I think this is where the etching blankets come into play. They, they do help when you are trying to do larger etchings. It's quite a struggle to pull it over. I probably do need to tweak my pressure settings, but I was really pleased with how this come out. It's picked up really nice grain in the aluminium plate. I did a few more test prints as well. Etching is a very trial and error process and there are so many different factors that influence the end print. But there you go, you can see that it even is able to do etchings like that. Even just all of these little tiny scratches, can you see those little lines? But you can see here, these are just really fine hairline scratches on the plate. And it's even picked up those. I love that it picks up you know, all of these little hairline marks. It just gives it character that you, know, you just can't really do when you're doing things digitally. So as you can see, this thing is, is pretty capable of printing a wide range of print techniques. For my needs, I think this is enough. I mean, I was planning on buying an etching press and really the difference between a proofing press and an etching press is that an uh, etching press has two rollers, one at the top and one at the bottom, and the base moves and the rollers are essentially fixed. Proofing press is different in that it only has a roller on the top and it's the rollers that move across the base. So when you're working with high pressures and you're doing things like you know, aqua tints and, and etchings, it is easier not to have to move the roller. Uh, it's easier to move the base. I think you do need to have you know, a little bit of strength to be able to push this roller across some things. Um, I don't think it's suitable for everyone. It's certainly not suitable for, for children, but 
For the price of how much this costs me, and when you consider the cost of an etching press, which is easily 1,000 to 2,000 pounds, um, this thing seems like a really good choice for a lot of people. So let's talk about some of the things that I might change with this. I think that a plywood base, as long as you go over something that is close to an inch thick, then it's fine. I haven't really seen too much issue. I think if you was going to make, say, an A2 or an A1 proofing press, maybe you could use metal, but it would be very expensive. It would be very, very heavy. What I've done is I've got an aluminium sheet here uh, that I use just to kind of raise up and down whatever I'm printing. And it also does add, obviously, some rigidity to the base. For me, that it seems like it's more than enough. Now, for upgrades, and I've seen some companies do this, is that they actually make this main roller, if I move this out of the way, they actually make this main roller adjustable to move up and down, very similar to an etching press. And it looks like a pretty simple build. Obviously, you just need some sort of screw mechanism and a bearing that can move up and down. And that's really about it. And I, I like that because then you don't have to mess around so much with raising and lowering uh, whatever you are printing on. This does take some trial and error when you're first setting up your print. As you can see, you do have to lay you know, pieces of paper just to bring it up ever so slightly to increase the pressure to get a better impression. So that can be a little bit time consuming. Um, it's not that much of a bother for me. Obviously, it would be easier to you know, just twist some, twist some screws here to raise and lower the roller. But yeah, that, that will probably be the only upgrade that I make to this. Lastly, let's talk about cost. How much did all of this cost me? The most expensive part is going to be the roller. If you have a metal lathe, you can make one yourself. I'm guessing most of you don't. You can get these fabricated for quite cheap. Now, I got a guy called Charlie who was super helpful and he made this for me on eBay. I'm going to put a link to his eBay store. If you're in the UK and you need any sort of fabrication, uh, send him a message. He might be able to help you out. He did a really good job on this roller and he did it for me for a very good price. This cost me £100, including postage. Usually it would probably be a little bit more expensive. He did have some spare stainless steel stock laying around. Now, I did get in contact with some of these sites where you upload your plans and you know they'll machine it for you. You can get instant quotes. Exometry, I think, is one. Roughly the price for a 65 diameter stainless steel roller like this to this length, it was about, I think, 200 euros, including postage. Yeah, obviously I got, I got it a little bit cheaper, but it's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg. The only other expensive parts was the plywood. I just bought half a sheet of plywood, which is you know about 1200 uh, wide, and I just cut this from it, and that cost me 50 pounds. The stainless steel rails, these cost me, I think about five pound each. Again, I just bought it in, in two meters and I've just cut how much I've, I've needed. So I've got some left over as well. The aluminium plates for the, for the side panels. Again, I just bought a plate of aluminium, about A4 size, and I've just cut it from that. And that cost me about 30 pounds. And then the other parts are the threaded rod and you have uh, very cheap bearings that I'm using here and also in the roller. Again, those cost about £10 in total and some nuts and bolts, you know, add on another five, ten pounds for that. So all in all, this cost me, you know, around about £200, give or take. And it is really good in terms of what you can do with this thing. And the only other thing that I would do is I'd recommend bolting it to a table. As you saw in the test prints, I'm struggling to kind of hold the press in place as I'm moving the roller across. The reason why I've got it on, on just legs is because I'm not gonna be using it all the time. I'm in a small room, I need to put it away. Ideally, you would have metal legs and they would be bolted into a table and it would be 10 times easier to print. I can manage, but yeah, I would recommend maybe looking at some sort of metal legs for this as well. Also, I wanna give a shout out to Gunning Arts if you are in the UK and you are interested in actually buying an etching press or you're looking for any sort of printmaking supplies, I'd highly recommend them. Jenny is always very helpful on all of the printmaking groups on Facebook. And if you are ever looking for help, I'd highly recommend joining some of these Facebook groups because there are so many people on those groups that are always happy to help you out and give you advice. Gunning Arts were really kind. They sent me some offcuts of their etching blankets. So, so the blankets that you saw in the test prints, this is what they are. They are actual etching blankets and they really do help with getting a 
very nice impression when you're doing etching. I've also used them for, for relief printing as well and they, they are helpful in that. It seems to really help with getting those fine details out of your etchings. I know that probably most of you, if you ever build this, you, you might not use it for etchings, but yeah, I would recommend investing in some decent blankets if you are thinking about doing etching. So that is it, hopefully you've enjoyed this build. I'm really happy with how this thing come out and what you can actually do with it. If you've got any questions, you're thinking about building this yourself, uh, feel free to put them in the comments below. I'll be happy to help anyone with any information that I've got. Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for everyone that has subscribed and leaves comments. It's really nice to hear that people uh, enjoy the content on this channel. I know it's kind of a mashup of, of everything I like to do. Hopefully it shows you how you can combine interests and skills to create new things. Anyway, that is it for today. I will catch you all later.